I am deeply humbled to be here. As a graduating senior, we stand here today at, at the crossroads. We are about to start a new beginning. A new tomorrow is ahead of us. At the same time, our chapter here at COA is coming to a close. My story began four years ago when I graduated from UWC in Venezuela. Unfortunately, my family could not make that trip to send, my family could not make that trip to my graduation. As soon as graduation was over, I immediately, I immediately flew home. I wanted to celebrate with them. I was so excited. I wanted to give them the exciting news that I was coming to this place called COA. But there was one slight problem. The UWC graduation is held in August, and I would need to be here in Bahaba early September. So instead of weeks of relaxing, eating home-cooked meal, and catching up with my family, I only had five days. This was not, there was no time to sit, to stand still, or to even breathe. To be honest, my mind was already in Bahaba. Five days went very quickly. I didn't even really unpack my suitcase. But at the end of these five days, I did one thing. I promised my mother that in 2011, she would be here watching and cheering as I walked to the podium to collect my diploma. You have to understand that my mom has been so instrumental in me being here today. My mom, has, my mom and I has a special bond. She has always taken an active role in my education and has pushed me to achieve my dreams. Even when I was very young, she taught me how to read by making sure when I come home that I would read aloud what I've learned from school that day. It was not until I was 13 I realized that my mom cannot read. When times were tough on my family, when money was tight, my mom took an extra job to earn money that I would continue with my education. While I am a grown man, I will always be a little boy in her eyes. After all these years of living on my own, traveling across the globe, and working in all types of communities, I can pretty do a good job of cooking, cleaning, and looking out for myself. <laughs> Yet, no matter how many years go by, when I go home, I do nothing. <laughs> 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 Not because I'm lazy, <laughs> but because my mother knows that nurturing has no expiring date. I can confide in her about anything in my life, any story, any personal matters, any stupid thought. She's there to listen. Two years ago, I was along with Andrew and Zim. We were fortunate enough to receive funding from the Davis Project for Peace to start a program that would help stabilize the Riverbank ecosystem in my home community. I was able to see my mom again. Of course, she immediately jumped in and played an important role in the project. Sometimes the two of us would wake up at four in the morning to cook meals for almost 50 students taking part in this project. And then I would drag her with me to the field to help me manage these kids. But here's the bad news. As much as I tried, I could not keep my promise. My mom is not here today. Oh, how I wish she was here. So I thought to myself, where would I take her if she was here? What would I show her so that she would know what COA really is? I would probably first take her to TAB. <laughs> For those of you who do not know, TAB is our dining hall. I would describe for her all the sleepless nights 
in TAB. I would introduce her to some of my fellow TADsters <laughs> who have toiled, sweat, and perhaps cried while looking at midterm paper, final assignments, and senior project late into the early hours of the morning. I would explain to my mom that TAB is more than just a working space. It is the biggest and most dynamic classroom at COA. It is a conference room where everything is negotiated and all crucial decisions are made. <laughs> After that, I would take my mom to meet my professors. I know that she would see how genuinely faculty at this college care about students' educational trajectory. Because our major is not structurally or systematically defined, we as students must work closely with faculty to tailor classes to our individual and collective needs. Our faculty has challenged us to be creative, proactive, and adaptive. I swear, if my mom was here, she would have to meet all of you. <laughs> every single professor, every staff, all of you. Lastly, if my mom was here, she would hang out with my fellow classmates. Trust me, <laughs> you guys would love her. <laughs> and she would love all of you, especially Adelina. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell my mom how hopeful I am and how much faith and confidence I have in this graduating class. She would immediately see why. I am hopeful that we are part of the solution to heal the wounds of this beautiful, troubling world. I have seen where we've used politics, arts, science, and every discipline under the sun to understand the challenges that lay before us. We, must, we may not know how to solve all the problems of this world, but here is one thing we do know, that the lack of solution doesn't justify ignoring the problem. The recognition that change is needed is the spring from which all solution flows. And while the journey before us may not be the most popular one, we understand that we have to continue creating the path that we seek. It is that common thread that unites us. It is that tie that binds us. It is the spirit of community. It is the essence of our education. That is who we are. I thank you. <laughs>